Hi everyone, how you going? Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. <sighs> Check this one out with me. This might be interesting. Well, I think it's interesting, but you might find it interesting too. Everything bad going on in the world can be linked to two immortal beings. You are currently being conquered by an invading alien force. I'd like to now share a story of the current ruler of our solar system, Nord, also known as Sin Nana Kosnu Dionysus Hyperion, the king of Tyre and currently Khan Allah. Najorn is a prince of the Cyrus Empire, the grandson of King Bor Anu. His father has been known as Enel, Yawa, Zeus, Jupiter, Bezelbub, Nanama, and Indra. His mother is known as Nihil, Sud, or Hedra. His oldest half brother was Nunta, aka Michael or Ares, who was Enel's oldest child, born of Enel's half sister, Indran a.k.a. Nima, Nanhas Sag, Demeter, Lilith, and the Mayan so snake goddess. His young brother is Bao, a.k.a. Ashka or Ad. Nort's children are, his oldest children are Hela, a.k.a. Eskrenok girl, and sorry for saying these names wrong, Persephone, his mother is Loki Abraxas, who shapeshifted into a woman to seduce Norge into his youth at a drunken par party. And his twins, Freya, aka Inna, Ishtar, Nina, Nena, Artemis, Kali, and Diana. Freya, aka Uta, Shashmas, Helios, Apollo, and Gabriel. To start off the story of Nord, I will start with before Nord was born. Nord's father, Yahweh, was born to the King Bor Anu and Queen Antu, his half-sister, and was their oldest son together, although not Bor Anu's eldest son when Yah was born. Anu's eldest son and heir was Odin, a.k.a. Er, As, Esa, Pyteth, Andal, Poison, and many other names. Some of the stories of Yah were also actually about Odin as well. But for this story, I will share Yahweh. I am talking about Odin's younger half-brother. Odin was already ancient when Yahweh was born. Yahweh was born only a couple of million years ago. Odin's mother was Queen Numu and dragon queen of the Orient Empire, the daughter of Timat. King Bor An and Odin are both over one billion years old. King Bor Anu was the son of the very first incarnation of Christ within our reality. King Borei Ashna, during his incarnation of the Borei Ashna, was founded the Cyrus Empire and the Galactic Federation, and led to the armies of light in the Demigrage War. After several wars against Draco, Christ has continued to incarnate within royal bloodlines of the Cyrus Empire nearly every time he has chosen to incarnate into our reality. King Borei was Borei's sixth son, and spent mil millions of years away from the Cyrus Empire, before finally returning to take the throne for himself. King Bor Anu and his son Odin spent many years fighting the Demigod and the Draco Wars. Having had several homes throughout the Pleiades and other nearby systems, it was King Bor Anu and his son Odin who commanded the armies that led them to the defeat of the Draco and the destruction of their homeworld of Theoban. After the Draco War, Bor Anu settled down in the Pallades for a while. During this time, Odin became engaged with his, to his half-sister, Indran, a.k.a. Demeter. Odin and Indran were in love with each other, but Odin, at the time, had chosen to become a creator god under the Orion Empire's Titan program, and had been stationed on the planet Neptune as the head of Titan. As a Titan creator god, he was tasked with seeding new life on his assigned world, as well as ruling it for the Orion Empire. While Odin was away on Neptune, his younger brother, Yahweh, began to spend more time with his half-sister, Indran, who promised to Odin, living together in their father's palace. One night, Yahweh got Indran drunk and seduced her and impregnated her, while their father found out that he was ferocious. He called off Indran's wedding to Odin and declared her 
Lilith and forget, forbade her from ever being allowed to get married. Odin and Indrin were both devastated, as they were both in love with each other, and Yahweh didn't care enough about her enough to argue with his father to allow her to marry him instead. Yahweh still claimed her as his consort, though, but didn't allow her to get in his way of enjoying other women. She gave birth to Yahweh's eldest son, Michael, Michael aka Nint Nintura, and I N. U R T A. Sorry for saying it wrong. Bor Anne soon after returned to Cyrus to challenge King Elu, the current king of the empire, for the throne. King Elu recently taken the throne, but was the only grandson of Christ Boro Ashna. While Bor Anne was his son, King Elu convinced the royal court to allow him to stay as king, but offered Bor Anne the position of his cupbearer, aka Hand of the King. Also, King Elu married his eldest daughter Frigga to Bor Anu's eldest son Odin. King Anu declared that their firstborn son would be the king of the Cyrus Empire. Soon after getting married, Thor. Madu. After King Bor Anu returned to the Cyrus Empire and took control of it during a coup, Yahweh began to become popular among the court. Instead of pursuing life of a warrior of a or a creator god like some of his oldest siblings, Yahweh played the role of a playboy politician and businessman. He was known for throwing parties and soon grew quite close to many members of the royal court of the Cyrus Empire. After gaining popularity among the royal court, Yahweh made a play at being becoming the heir of the Cyrus Empire over his much older brother Odin. Ancient laws of succession within the Cyrus Empire declared that whoever possessed the highest percentage of King Bor Bori Ashar's original bloodline would be the heir to the throne. Yahweh declared that since he had possessed more of Christ Bruno Eshna's original bloodline than Odin did, that he should become the heir of the empire. The royal court agreed and Yahweh was declared the heir of the empire due to the fact his mother was Queen Entu and was who was the daughter of Burai, giving him a pure bloodline of having both parents as the children of Burai. While Odin, known as the Esna and the House of Yahweh, oh sorry, hang on. While Odin, Odin only had one. This created some hostility between the House of Odin, known as the Esna, and the House of Yahweh, known as the Vena. Nindra, Michael, and Thor Marduk were the eldest sons within their two houses and both pursued the path of warrior and were consistent rivals. They each pursued each other and quickly they each grew to the positions of general within both their houses. When King Bor Anu took control of the Cyrus Empire, the previous king, King Anul, fled to, uh, to our solar system, claiming it as his domain, and granting the rest of the Cyrus Empire to King Bor Anu, the Odin Orion Queen ended up supporting King Anul's claim against King Bor Anu's over the ownership of the solar system. This led to the Tomat War, in which King Bor laid waste King Bor Anu laid waste to our solar system in order to defeat King Anul and reclaim our solar system under the domain of the Cyrus Empire. The Tomat, Tomat War led to most life. Tomat War led to most life within the solar system being wiped out, including the destruction of the planet Tomat, the horizontal orbit of Uranus, the major, major loss of atmosphere on Mars. Mars had been the throne of the world of King Anul within our solar system, who had ruled from Mount Olympus there. The giant face you can see in telescope pictures not far from the mountain is the tomb of the King Anul. After the Tomat War, Thor was given, given the throne of Mars, despite the previous promise of King Anu had given him, teasing him with the throne of the Cyrus Empire itself to get him to switch sides during the Tiamat War. While Odin was devastated over the loss of the planet Tiamat, the soul of the planet Tiamat belonged to his grandmother, who was Tiamat the first queen and the founder of the Orion Empire. The daughter of Christ Eternal and Pictus Sophia, born outside the realm of matter, she was the greatest creator god within the history of our reality, and as a planet she possessed a life force, a spirit never seen before.
The planet Tiamat was known as the Living Library and an absolute spiritual paradise. It was very similar to Pandora from Avatar movies. The level of spirit consciousness there had never been seen before and life thrived upon it. Because of the Tiamat divine energy, it was one of the holy sites within the galaxy as well. The planet Tiamat was ruled by Odin's mother Queen Numu, a dragon queen of the Orion Empire and the daughter of Tiamat herself. Uh, the Kadastu, Order and Numu also called Tiamat home. The Kadastu's Order was a religious group that functioned much like a Jedi of Star Wars. The Nurmos were once believed to have been the chosen race that would flee, lead our galaxy into the winning war of poverty that was its purpose of life within our reality matrix. The Nurmos were once with, with the source and nature and created abundance everywhere they were and renowned all possessions agreed, very similar to the Navi of Avatar movies. They were bluish purplish giants that were the custodians of the living library. Most of the dinosaurs lived on Tiamat, not Earth. Odin couldn't bear the loss of a planet Tiamat after seeking out his uncle Mir, drinking from the well of wisdom. Odin developed a plan. He was able to find nine large pieces of the planet Tiamat that still had a life force flowing through them, and as well as the heart star of Tiamat, bringing them together using a special tree known as the Yagastril. Odin was able to save the spirit of Tiamat and created the planet Earth. Odin's birth name was Ea, and Earth means Ea's home, Ea's heart, or Ea's hearth. When Odin created Earth, he wanted it to be a spiritual paradise. It once was, before the destruction of the planet Tiamat. Although much has been lost, he had already almost nearly restored Earth to a former glory of Tiamat. Tired of the politics of Orion and the Cyrus empires, Odin refused to allow either of them to claim ownership of the world, declaring his newly created world sovereign. Although Orion and Cyrus both were against this, Odin was able to promise them payments in exchange for his world's freedom. As long as Odin and Aster paid their protection money, the Cyrus and Orion Empire would let him rule Earth. During the early days of Earth, many of the highborn Orions of the Orion Empire came to Earth, R-A-R or Y-N-I-O-M. That was the noble class of the Orion Empire called themselves. They possessed blonde or silver hair, blue eyes and white skin, looking very much like the elves in of the Lord of the Rings or the Tarragons in the Game of Thrones. In fact, the Tarragons of the Game of Thrones are based on the Dragon Queens of Orion. After billions of years of breeding between races of dragon and man within the Orion Empire, the Aryans were the result. They had a large presence on Tiamat as well, as Odin's mother was the Dragon Queen ruler of Tiamat. The Elton Palladians also come to Earth. They were much taller than the most races of man, averaging 10 to 18 feet tall depending on their clan. They were also predominantly red-haired and green-eyed. Odin's wife Frigga was a Palladian Elton princess, and many of the Eltons were once all loyal to her father, pledged loyalty to her after his death. There were, there were also other Palladians that come to Earth as well as Odin was also known in the Pleiades. Eventually, the Orion and Cyrus empires started to claim that Earth was far wealthier than the payments they were providing. Odin had transformed Earth into a beautiful paradise full of resources and abundance, and they wanted it. Demanding payments larger than Odin could pay, they ended up invading Earth and claiming the world for themselves. The Cyrus Empire took control of the planet and Yahweh was given authority over Odin. Odin was given the title Eniki, which meant Lord of the Earth or Lord of Creation, and Yahweh was titled Enel, which meant Lord of the Air or Lord of the World command. Yahweh began to enslave large portions of the population, forcing them to work in mines or 
help cut down large trees and forests of the world for their lumber. Yahweh made earth his home and created the Garden of Eden to his personal estate. Located in the mountain cedars of Lebanon, not far from the Anunnaki spaceport of Baalbek. Soon after Yahweh's half-sister consort Indram joined him on earth, Indram Dem Demeter had trained to be a master healer and was put in charge of medical and health systems of earth. It was shortly after that that Yahweh noticed one of the young women that worked as a healer for Indram. Barely into adulthood, her name was Sud. She was one of the most beautiful women Yahweh had ever seen. While Indram was gone elsewhere on business, Yahweh talked to the young Sud into spending time with him and ended up Yahweh talked time talked to the young Sud into spending time with him and ended up getting her drug and trying to seduce her. He came onto her, but she resisted claiming she was still a virgin and did not wish to lay with him. But what Yahweh didn't care, he forced himself upon her. When Indran returned, Sud told her that Yahweh had raped her. Indran was furious, and as he had done the same thing to her, she went to her father, King Bor Anu, and demanded he be punished. Odin also took his half-sister side, not only because he loved her, but because he knew... With Yahweh gone, he'd once again be the ruler of earth. King Bor Anu punished Yahweh with exile and cast him into the wilds of earth, where he was taken deep into the mountains, away from all civilization, and left. But his exile didn't last very long. Soon Sud learned that she was pregnant with Yahweh's child. Yahweh was given the choice choice he could marry Sud or remain in exile. Yahweh chose to marry Sud. Upon marry Enel Yahweh, Sud took the title of Nilhul. When Nilhul gave birth to her son, he was named Sin after the act in which he was conceived. Since then, he has been known as Nord, Nana, Kosnu, Hyperion, Dionysus, and currently Khan Allah. After Nord was born, he grew up with his father's estate in Eden, in the cedar mountain forests of Lebanon not far from Belbeck. Nord was not just like his older brother, Ninja Michael, though. While many of the other young gods, such as Thor, Ty, and Michael, sought to become great warriors, Nord had not wished to do so. Nord was much more like his father, and he wanted to become a wealthy ruler and a businessman. He was also highly impressed by Loki, who was possible the richest of the gods he knew at the time, who had followed his father Abraxas's path of greed and power. Njord knew where would always be warriors out there that would fight for him. He wanted to live like royalty. He wanted to be a lover, not a fighter. Instead, he pursued a path of knowledge, mostly in the ways of business and law. He also loved to party. Once he grew a little older, he would grow, throw parties every night, eventually being known as the God of Wine. Nord also loved the sea and the ocean. As he grew older, he settled among the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea, in a sea that had also become known as Tyre. Although Nord definitely loved to party, he also have might have won, been the one that started the saying, work hard, party hard, play hard. Although I'm not sure he ever really worked while in Tyre, he started several businesses producing things like dye, jewellery and clothing. He loved the colour blue as much as he loved the sea and was known for decorating his homes as well as himself and lapis lazuli. Nearly every day he had a party either at his palace next to the sea or on one of his many boats. He had many boats and liked to travel the seas, which is what likely why in Egypt, whereas he's known as Kusnu, K-H-O-N-S-U, he was known as the god of travellers, and to the Norse, he was known as the god of the sea. Like I mentioned earlier, Nord was a big fan of Loki. Loki had a way of being able to barter and make deals that many other gods did not possess. Nord spent a lot of time with Loki, wanting to learn from him. During one of his parties of his youth, when Nord was really drunk, Loki took the form of a beautiful woman and seduced Nord. The act led, Lo led to Loki getting pregnant, and he soon gave birth to a daughter, 
Esquinal, Hela or Persephone. At the time, though, neither Nord and Loki wanted to raise her. Nord was a single bachelor still and didn't want his party life to be interrupted by a child. So his aunt Demeter, Indran, Nysohog, Nima, and Lilith ended up adopting her and raised her as his own. Nord and Loki participated in her life, just not as full-time fathers. This led to Hela Eshnerik. Eskenagi learning a great deal from her adoptive mother while also having access to the knowledge and resources of her father's Norge and Loki. Demeter Indran took great care to make sure Hela would never need to depend on others and taught her everything she could, leading to Hela becoming incredibly knowledgeable and one of the greatest sorceresses in the world this world has known. When Odin and Loki belong being to two primary creator gods of the planet, she actively sought to learn from Loki as well, gaining knowledge many of the other gods never learned to process. Nord's business side lent him to try to create relationships with the Orion Aryans, the Atlantan Palladians that also lived on the earth at, under the Vena of Cyrus rule. He even developed relationships with some of the other races such as the Naga and the Reptilians. Having picked up on Loki's ability to play both sides of conflict, he soon learned that one of lords among the Atlanteans and Zu are planning to attempt to overthrow Cyrus Venner on Earth and Mars and led to the assault against God King Anu. Enzu was the grandson of King Anu and the nephew of Frigga and Odin. Enzu had regained favour among the Cyrus Empire thanks to Odin vouching for him, and he had become one of the leaders of Lantis, and although Enzu had been presenting himself as being loyal to the Cyrus Empire, secretly he wanted to was revenge for the eradication of his people during King Anu's team at war. Nord saw the potential conflict as a way to increase his power and wealth on Earth. If his grandfather, father and older brother were defeated, he would become the heir of his family or even have possible claim to the throne of the Cyrus Empire. Enzu's plan required that he steal seven powerful artifacts, including one of the Rings of Power and the Tablets of Den Destiny, as well as secure Yahweh's palace fortress, which would allow him to stand against the Venar. He needed Nord's help through getting in through the security to get inside. Nord agreed to secretly disable the defense systems while Enzu snuck inside, while Yahweh and the other gods were away. One night, once the night, once the time was right, Enzu's plan was successful, and was able to successfully steal the artifacts to secure the fortress. All of the Venar's initial efforts to recover the fortress to stop Enzu. Enzu failed. When Yahweh Enels first found out, he had Odin Ears arrested and brought to him, believing he knew what was going on, but Odin did not. Yahweh assembled the God Council and sought a plan of action in stopping Enzu. Due to the artifacts he acquired while taking over the fortress, he was practically unstoppable. Michael Nin Nina Tara volunteered to lead the assault against him, and Odin agreed to make modification and create weapons that would be able to stop Enzu. Once prepared, Michael and Enzu had a great battle, and by the end of it, Enzu had been killed. While investigating how Enzu had been able to breach the fortress, he discovered that his son Nord had been had allowed him to enter. No longer able to trust his son, he exiled him to Mars. Yahweh and Nord take Enzu's body to Tor Madu on Mars to bury him next to his grandfather, King Alanu. As punishment for rebelling against the Vena of Cyrus, Yahweh sentenced many of the Al Alton Palladians to a labor camp and to work in their mines. Many more were sent to Mars to work there as well as under Nord. Because Odin was so close to the Palladians and was often light on punishment, Odin and ya Yahweh and had Odin removed from his current position of power. Following the Venal's invasion and conquering Earth, Odin had been put in charge of the Esbob Hel Helham, which were the mines that led from South Africa 
into the inner earth, as well as the inner earth itself. Yahweh's granddaughter, Helga, Hela or Eshgrenal, had been proving herself lately to be much smarter than many of the other gods, and now she was older. He decided to give her a position of authority and to see how she handled it. Odin was to escort Hela to the inner earth and train her on how to perform the role of ruling Asbub, Helen. During their time together, Odin and Hela had an affair and had two children together, Ninga, Shkina, Thoth, Hermes, and Kaskabar, and Geshkina, or Ninga, Shkina, sorry if I said these wrong, were much like his mother and father and were incredibly intelligent and a fast learner. Both Odin, Odin and Hela took to a liking to him and both tried to teach him everything they knew leading him to become quite the brilliant god. Meanwhile, removed from his position, Odin built a learning and science complex within the inner earth where he could focus on the Genesis scientists and create a god experiments. His son, Niga, Niga, I can't say that, Ninga, uh, just his son Toth moved in there with him. While Nord got to Mars, though he found out things weren't going to be easy. Thor Marduk was the ruler of Mars and had been given the task to harvest all the mine and its resources by King Bor Enu. But when Nord was going to Mars, he learned Thor had actually been working on bringing life back to Mars. Instead of focusing on the further destruction of Mars, Thor was trying to save it. Many of the Atlant Elton Pleiadians had been sent there as slaves and rallied behind Thor and were aiding him in trying to restore the planet to agricultural world it once was. This effort was distracting them from their primary purpose of harvesting the planet. While Nord reported back to his father about what Thor was secretly doing, Yahweh reported it to King Anu who deemed that military action needed would be taken if required to set Thor and his workers back to task. The strong arm tactic only backfired on the Venar though, and it caused the majority of their workforce to strike and revolt. It was at this time that Odin, Ea and Indrum Demeter were tasked with creating human workers to replace them. After Odin had successfully created humans on Earth and lost his titles for sneaking into Eden and teach these hybrid children Adam and Eve, his son Thor called out for asking for his help. Odin was now in conflict with the Vanar once again and had taken Adam and Eve west and created the nation of Atlantis for them and many of the revolting Atlanteans and Orions had joined this new nation to stand united against the Venar. There was now fighting on the two fronts, both Earth and Mars. Thor's effort to save Mars were being destroyed by the Venar, who were now taking military action against him and his men. Thor's numbers were slowly dwindling, and unlike the Venar, he had no one to turn up to back up for reinforcements. Odin agreed to help him and went to Mars and created human workers to aid his son Thor, both in fighting against the Venar and to help them save Mars ecosystem. The humans had created he created had red skin and had a greater link to nature than previous humans he had created on Earth. With the help of these new red humans, Thor was beginning to turn the tide and was successfully fighting back against the Venar once again and was able to resume his efforts on terraforming Mars back to its original state. Nord was not happy. He wanted to return to Earth to enjoy the seas once again, not to be stuck on a wasteland like that was Mars. His forces were losing and he needed aid in successfully winning the war on Mars. So he reached out to his grandson Thoth, Hermes. Thoth had been training with his father Odin in Genesis Labs and had been instrumental in development of humans. Nord secured a meeting with Thoth and Yahweh and got Yahweh off to offer Thoth titles and land in exchange for creating a new breed of humans to help the Venar on Mars. Thoth created the Yellow Humans, or the Sino people, named after Sin, aka Nord's birth name. 
They were shorter than the other humans, although not as small as the dwarves that Odin had created. They were also given reptilian and grey DNA to make them more likely to follow orders and not question authority, which also increased their artesian skills and making them better engineers, mechanics, builders. As a reward for his creation, Thoth was given land of Egypt to rule over. The Sino people quickly turned the tide of the Battle of Mars within a few generations. They were able to build many machines that aided in the harvesting and the mining Mars as well as the battle. They built boring machines and were known to bore tunnels under settlements of the red humans, Eltons and Thor's other allies attacking them from within their walls in the middle of the night. As time went on, they also built large roaming cities, much like those seen used by the nation of Zedgoya in John Carter from Mars, serving as a large mining and military bases. As the technology of the yellow humans improved, Thor's forces lost more and more land until finally they were forced to surrender. Nord's victory claimed victory over Mars, but by the time the war was over though, Mars' atmosphere could barely sustain life anymore. Nord had succeeded at nearly killing off Mars. It was at this point Thor fled to Earth and took many of his red humans with him, who settled within what is now Southeast United States. Nord was allowed to return to Earth as well, and he brought his yellow Sino people to the area currently known as Japan. When Nord first returned to Earth, he quickly returned to living by the sea once again. The Sino people settled very close to the sea, to where the sons of Cain had settled. The capital city of the sons of Cain was called Sham, C-H-A-M, and was located where Beijing is now located today. Located today, the sons of Cain were the sons of Cain were white people, descendant from Adam and Eve. The sons of Cain bloodline and genetics had been marked by Thoth upon Cain's exile. The mark of Cain was a genetic alteration that prohibited the males from being able to grow facial hair. This made them easily identifiable to other humans who had no problem growing beards. The Sino people at first began to trade with the sons of Cain, but before long they invaded their lands and conquered them. They killed most of the men, but kept the women for their own. This blending of the races led to the development of the Mongolian races and also raised the average height of the Sino people over many generations. Meanwhile, Nord had chosen a bride to take as a wife from among the other gods of the earth. He married nine girls. Selene, who was the daughter of daughter of Indrum, Demeter, and Odin, Ea. Er. Now, it was around this time that the Vena versus the Asinar war was growing out of control on Earth, with Thor and the Martians joining the Orions, Atlantean, Alton, Pleiadians, the white humans of Atlantis of the Vena also were upping their war efforts. At this time Atlantis included most of North America and Europe as well as the northeast corner of Africa and parts of northern South America. Adding the Sino people to try to their forces greatly blossomed the Vanna who had been relying on the Aboriginal human slaves before that point. Before long, Atlantis was being attacked from all sides. It was at this point Odin sacrificed himself on the Agrisail, seeking answers from God the Father on how to save the people from being wiped out by the Venar. After hanging on the Agastril for nine days, Odin not only learned the secrets to the ruins, that code that read this this reality matrix. He also learned how to summon Christ into the reality as well. It was shortly after this that Christ Boulder was born. Around the same time Christ Boulder was born, Nord and his wife gave birth to twins Fry, Otushamash, and Freya, Inna. Christ Boulder, Nord's children, grew up together, although not immediately. When word got out that Boulder was a reincarnation of Christ Bura Eshna, Many of the across the Cyrus and Orion Empire and even beyond were interested to see if this was true. While still young, Christ Boulder was able to bring the war between the Adosul and the Vena to the end. In exchange, though, there was a trade of some members to the ret retrospective fractions. Thoth, Cassivar, Hermes, Mima, Mimi, 
and Hona were all, all were asked to come and live with the Vina. Meanwhile, Nord and his children Freya and Freya were sent to Asgard, Atlantis, to supervise the governing affairs. Hoina was Loki's and Odin's little brother, a son of Queen Numu, and was the leader of that Orions and settled on Earth after the destruction of Timak Maldark. Nord and his later his son Freya took Holo's place at the head of the Orions. Because of their relatively close ages, Baldo, Freya, Freya become very close friends. As they grew older, Ina, Kale, and Baldo. Demzio and Krishna began to fall for each other and eventually decided to get married. Balder and his wife Freya were given the titles ruled over the land currently known as India. Meanwhile, Freya became the king of the elves, Orion, and ruled in the area around Hudson Bay, northeast Canada, Greenland. There have been peace between the Asnos and the Vena for tens of thousands of years before Christ Balder was killed. Baldo was threat to the House of Abraxas' plans. With Christ's return, he would very likely get in the way of what the Abraxas was, had been doing. So Loki came up with a plan not only to lead Boros' death, but brought the Asia and the Vena war back into full bloom. Loki found a way to blame Thor Marduk for Boyo's death. And then Freya found out she called for all the Vena lords to join her army to claim retribution for the death of Christ. Identities of Freya and Balder being the husband and the wife is skewed in what little is left of Norse mythology. In the Eddas, Balder's wife is known as Nena and Freya's husband is known as Oda, O-D-R. Nena equals Indra equals Freya and Oda Oa equals border. This is why Freya is always is always sad about her husband being gone and never to return. Her husband, Oda, is actually Balder. Freya was able to get all the Vena to rally behind her and declared a war on Atlantis and Asgard when they refused to hand Thor over. After many battles, Thor was finally defeated and imprisoned within a pyramid, basically buried alive and left to die. Sifri begged many of those gods to forgive him and help free him, but almost all of them refused until she was finally able to talk Indra and Demeter to help her, and they found Thor inside on the brink of death. Although he survived, Thor was sent into exile for punishment. Freya, in the meantime, took over rulership of Baldur's lands in the area of the Indra's belly. The war between Vena and the Ashkenaz did not end there. The Vena had renewed their efforts to destroy Antla Atlantis once and for all. The white and red humans of Atlantis began to raid the slave camps of the Vena and set the human slaves free. The Vena did not see the humans as equal and could live among them like the Asia of the Atlantis did. All the regions under the Vena control throughout Africa and Asia treated humans as slaves. The Atlantis raids on their slave camps was greatly hampering the production of their mines. And once again, the Vena turned to Thor, Toph, to Thoth, Hermes, and Kaskimar to create new workers for them. Thoth created a new breed of humans to work in the mines of Africa. His mother, Hela Eskenazi, had married his older half-brother, Ty, Hades, and Negril, and they needed newer and better workers to meet their quotas. So Thoth took the original Aboriginal humans that encompassed the bulk of their workforce and made them stronger, increasing their testosterone and their muscle mass and also darkened their skin to keep them from absorbing the light of the sun, which often led to their human slaves waking up and revolting. He lowered, he lowered their critical thinking skills to make them less likely to successful revolt or question orders as well. His mother wanted better workers for mines, but Tyre wanted better warriors. These new African blacks were some of the best human warriors the world had ever seen, trained by Tyre himself. Tyre at this point had less Asia and joined the Vanar as after marrying his wife Hela, because Tyre was one of the greatest warriors among the Asia and responsible for many of the losses of the Vena faced in battle, Yahweh and El offered him the greatest titles in exchange for switching his alliances. Tyre was promoted to the status 
equal to the brother of Enel, Yahweh, Zeus, and Ea, Odin, and Iki, poisoned on the, count, on the gold council when he accepted the offer, which is why Hades is now commonly known as the brother of Zeus and Poisonen, despite actually being Poisonen's ex second eldest son. Tyre's new black army was the catalyst that led to the destruction of Atlantis. With Nord leading the Venar armies, the combination might of Nord's Sino warriors and Tyre's African warriors, Atlantis fell. Upon the fall of Atlantis, many of the white humans that lived on the islands of Atlantis fled to Europe and they were separated from their red and white brother in America. It was at this point that Yahweh, Enel, and Nord Allah decided that the only way to end the war and bring Earth under full control of the Venar was that all the red and white humans needed to be eliminated. The Venar believed all humans should be slaves and only slaves and they were nothing more than beasts of burden. But Odin and Ea had given the white and red humans too much free will and they did not believe they could ever be fully enslaved without high risk of rebellion. Nord was changed, charged with leading the campaign to wipe out the survivors of Atlantis throughout Europe and America. Leading the Sino people, Nord began a campaign that spread across Asia and into Europe. Meanwhile, Thoth was given African armies and was told to help Nord conquer Europe. If you're familiar with the Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series, you might have read that Tolkien got the idea while working for the Vatican, making copies of ancient texts. Tolkien got the idea for the Lord of the Rings, reading about the ancient world before the flood of Noah. Nord equals Surin, and Thoth equals Suriman, and Gandalf equals Odin. Nord led his armies against Europe, but the survivors of Atlantis were able to resist. They defeated the Nord in the battle that began to strike back against the Venar Empire. It was at this point that the entire Venar Empire of Asia and Africa, threatened by survivors of Atlantis, that Yahweh decided to cause a flood to end the world of man once and for all and eliminate the red and white humans forever. The gods were sworn to secrecy, but they could not warn any of the humans of the upcoming calamity. But it was Odin who secretly warned Noah, who was about, was also his demigod son, about the upcoming flood. He gave Noah instructions on how to build an ark, and thanks to this act, the white race survived. In America, the members of the red race also survived thanks to intervention of members of some of the insectoid races. You might have heard the tale of the Hopi Indians and how they were saved by, from the flood by the end people who offered them shelter underground. After the flood was over, Yahweh was greatly upset that Noah had survived and his plan had failed. He wished to have Noah killed, but was stopped by the high priest Gazil. Gazil was the high priest of the Meshulak order, the priesthood of the Cyrus Empire, who told him that if Noah survived, it was because the great creator of all had chosen for it to be so. Because of this, King Yenu instructed Yahweh to spare Noah and allow his family to start a new and new in the new era of earth. Following the flood of Noah, the gods rebuilt the cities there within the lands of Sumeria, Mesopotamia, within earth now completely under Vanar control. God King Bor Anu once again gave the order to continue with the mining and the harvesting of all the resources of the earth. The Vanar had saved many of the Aboriginal, Sino, Yellow and African black humans to restart their slave colonies afterwards. The white descendants of Noah made their way both south and west from the Caucasus Mountains where the Ark landed, occupying the Middle East, Europe, North Africa. The Aboriginal humans were placed in India and southwest Southeast Asia down to Australia, while the Sino people were returned to Eastern Asia and the African black to the South Africa, Southern Africa. There was peace once again for a time as the survivors restarted their civilizations, but then Thor, Marduk, returned to the scene. Thor had lost his wife, Sylph, during the flood, and he was pissed about it. When he returned, he attacked Egypt and conquered it from his younger half-brother Thoth. Although Thor was not allowed to hold titles, he split Egypt between his two sons Set, Magini, and Modu, or Osiris. Thor continued to plot against the Venar 
and the other gods until finally leading his rebellion about 4,000 years ago, most commonly known today as Lucifer's Rebellion. Thor was able to unite all the white and red humans once again, as well as making new allies and the reptilians, chasing the Matori of the other gods off the planet. Upon defeating the Rena, Vena and laying claim to the earth, Thor declared himself Ra, the avatar of the sun itself and the one true god. Under Thor's guidance, humanity went on to have a golden age like never before. The reign of Thor, Ra, Lucifer lasted about 400 years, and during that time, humanity made some of the greatest advances in history. In South Southern Hemisphere, Black Empire arose that the United Most Africa, Australia, and South America. At the time, the majority of Southeast Asia, India, was also Black Aboriginal. China and Eastern Asia also saw great advances and began to have an age of enlightenment that was unseen during the time under Nord Nord's rule. The humans had only known slavery under the Venar's rule flourished. Meanwhile, Gold King Anu gave was giving him a prophecy that one day he would die at the hands of a human. For being billions of years old, this was horrible news. When he received the word that Thor, Lucifer and humanity had staged a rebellion and took control of the earth, for it was the first time in a long time, God King Enu was scared. It didn't take much persuasion for the God King Enu to grant the Vanar the greatest weapons of war within the Cyrus Empire to wipe out the kingdom of Lucifer and man. The destruction of the earth saw it at the time was perhaps the greatest in history. It was when most of the world's deserts were created, when the Grand Canyon was burnt out, when Sodom and Gomorrah happened. By the time the assault was done, the majority of the world men had been destroyed. But worst of all, the Tower of Babel had been destroyed. The Tower of Babel was a primary hub for a type of psychic internet that allowed any human that had a halo device surgically implanted in their head to telepathically send messages to each other and even download knowledge directly just like Neo learning Kung Fu in the Matrix movies. When the Tower of Babel was destroyed it caused a mind wipe among the humans that were connected to it with many of them not being able to remember their names and when the Vena and Iarchy gods returned and tried to take control of humanity they found most humans had no clue who they were and attacked. The demigod Abraham was chosen to start a new religion a new nation and to lead these people in war against the Gentiles of Atlantis. After selecting a champion, Yahweh decided to leave Earth and leave Nord in charge. With the bloodline of Abraham was later enslaved by the Egyptians, it was Nord that helped free them and lead them through the desert back to the land of Canaan. Moses received the Ten Commandments from Nord, Sin, at his mountain, Mount Sinai. Later, Rome was found by the Vena with the original Roman royalty being established by the Phoenician descendants of Abraham. Within a few hundred years, Nord had taken retaken control of much of the world and was making great progress against the survivors of Atlantis. It was at this point that God, King Anu, declared Nord the ruler of our solar system and Earth, and he was given the title of Khan Allah. God, God King Allah, called the other gods, such as Yahweh, Enel, Odin, Ea, and Ninja and Michael away, sending them to another solar system to deal with other words, worlds. He gave Nord, Khan Ella, his message to reclaim full control of Earth and eliminate the Atlantean bloodlines by the year 2030, so that they could continue, then continue the full harvest and mining of all Earth's resources. The ESA decided that they needed to do something special to save not only the Atlantean bloodlines that they sired, but the entire Earth. If the Vanar completed their planet, the Vanar would harvest their planet to the point of extinction, just like they had done in the Mars, landing how to beat Christ into the Matrix reality from Odin, they launched the Messiah mission. The Esna knew they needed to do something drastic, and if they were going to save Earth from its destructions at the hands of the Vanar, if the Atlantan bloodlines fell, then all hope would be lost. They chose a host for the Messiah among a group of people known as the Amrathians. They were red-haired people that had settled in the region of Galilee. They were from the British Isles that mostly ran the trade port ports in the area. 
They primarily dealt in the trade of tin, which was mined on the Cornwall region of England, due to the bronze being primarily metal used at the time. The tin not being native to the Middle East, Christ was not a something like they claim. Yeshua ben Yosef was born in May and training after many years began his mission to awake humanity from the past and divine roots. If Christ could awaken the God powers within the humanity, they could save Earth, but Christ fell and Khan Alan Nord had him killed. Christ went to Jerusalem because he knew it was the seat of Satan on Earth and the home of Khan Allah. This is why Jesus was visited by Satan in the desert just outside Jerusalem during his 40 days in the wilderness. When Christ Yoshua turned down, Khan Allah's offer to rule the world beside him, Khan Allah then had the Sanhedrin's kill Christ. This sparked the war that lasted for 300 years until the Romans killed enough of them and destroyed enough of their knowledge that Khan Allah was able to create his own version of Christianity that would worship worship him. And then the Bible was formed. It was composed to honor Khan Allah and all his forms as Dionysus, Kronos, Nord, and Allah, Yahweh, Saturn, etc. Yoshua ben Yoshef, born on 3rd of March in 3833. <laughs> There's those numbers. Nord, Jonas was born on December 25th. So why did the Roman elite, whose bloodlines can be tracked all the way back to the Phoenicians, change the name of Yoshua ben Yoshef in the Bible to Jesus? Did you know that in Greek, that Jesus means son of Zeus. Did you know that it was another name of Dionysus? Did you know that the Roman holiday Saturnalia was a holiday day to celebrate Saturn, Satan that was celebrated during the week of December 25th? It was a major event decorating trees in his honor. Ever wonder why Christians have been convinced to use the weapon of Christ's death on the cross as their holy symbol? Why communion is a blood sacrifice ritual? playing feasting of the flesh and the blood of Christ, why it is almost the exact copy of a ritual of a worship, Dionysus, that involved drinking wine. With the creation of Nord Allah's version of Christianity, the first step of the plan was action while Christianity was spreading throughout the Roman Empire, was still seeing resistance from the Zastroastrians in the Middle East and Persia. So he sent Freya, sent his son Freya to Muhammad to have him start the religion of Islam which in turn wiped out the Zoroastrians. Well, all this was going on, Nord Allah was also retaking control of the Sino people and using them to recontrol Asia. One of the first things he had his Sino people do was break up the massive black empire that had popped up in the Southern Hemisphere at the time. The Southeast Asia was mostly black, but he had his Sino people march south and take over most of the Southeast Asia, almost re reaching Australia. This broke the Black Empire into two pieces, which was the first step towards work, weakening it and bring it towards the Black Abro Blacks and the Aborigines back under control, his control as well. He yet later used Genghis Khan to wipe out most of Northern Asia, securing many of the lands and the Roman Empire had failed to conquer. Meanwhile, he used his forces within the Islamic world to retake the control of Northern Africa and parts of Southern Europe. He is now very close to completing his goal. It was Nord Khan Allah that planned almost every war throughout the war world over the past thousands of years, including all the three wars. Yes, I said three, as the third war is just now beginning, and it will end with the destruction of Europe and North America, ushering in a new world order under the control of Islam and in China, followed by the complete enslavement of what remains of the human race. You know, like, <laughs> we've been in a third world war for a while now. It's been going on since the late 80s, early 70s, the Third World War started. So I um, hope you're still with me and I uh, appreciate it reading this to you. I haven't had much time to do much lately. Uh, my dad's gone to my brother's for a couple of days, so I just thought I would share a couple of things that I have saved. So, so wherever you are in the world, thanks for watching. Um, all the videos that you've seen as I've been reading this, I have heaps and heaps of things I want to share with you. I just haven't had time uh, to share. So hang around. I miss you all like crazy. And um, yeah, like, share, subscribe or not. But um, I do love you all. I miss you all. And um, thanks. I'll see you in the next one. Much love. Bye now.